Good morning everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project and I have a Dixie 5 wood-burning cook stove here just got delivered to the homestead actually me and a friend had to help deliver it it was heavy and took some work um, I'm going to show you around but obviously you see the back plate is not connected I'll show you around and show you what's got to be done to it and show you its pros and cons um, basically it's in pretty good shape considering its age the enamel is pretty good for the most part and it's got a four burner cook stove and a griddle in the middle that sounded funny um, came with the adapter plate for a normal stove pipe I used my um, ramp to get it up on a truck with a um, two-wheel cart that ramp is from my Christian camper which was a toy hauler back in the day I kept the ramp and happy I did. Now what we got here is a cooking oven with slide-in rack and the uh, enameled coating inside the oven. The oven is still pretty clean surprisingly and uh, there were some mice up inside underneath the burner plates but in the oven nothing got in so that's good. And this is a removable plate for cleaning out ash because I'll show you that how this works in a minute everything works look the spring on the oven still works pretty cool these can be redone I've got here uh, I have the the box to where is it well somewhere else I have the um, clean out box set aside um, I don't have the tools to shake for the shaker but I don't use the shaker anyway so that doesn't bug me here is an opening door it can be front load or top load uh, but you have to take out this metal heat sink plate which is like a uh, metal fire brick sort of to do so and I don't really want to do that so I'll probably be doing top load on this and as you can see this was never used front load the latches still work pretty cool the original grip now the only thing is mice had made a nest in oh there it is the ash box and that had caused moisture to build up in the nest and this was in there and it corroded it some it's still solid and functional, so I'm going to have to clean that and refinish it somehow. We'll see about that. But it's still intact, and all the plates are all intact. There's no, no warping or cracks or anything like you see on some of the antique stoves. All this comes off. Let me get the other direction here. All this comes off, and there's your, your burning box. Now, the only thing that I'm unsure of with this stove is how much wood I can fit in here and how long it's going to burn on a load of wood all damped down. So that is an issue. I'm going to have to see how long it'll burn. Um, so I'm going to do some experiments today. I'm going to put a fire in here and get it burning and fill it up and damp it down and see how long it'll go. But I also want to burn off any dirt and any rust and any moisture or anything and any, you know, whatever, anything at all throughout the whole stove today and then start the process of cleaning it up. Now these are sort of a unique and cool thing. They're like a fire brick but they're made of heavy thick cast iron and each one of these back in the day would have lifted out but I don't think they ever will again and I'm not gonna mess with them. Once I get this cleaned off nicely and surprisingly the original surface is still visible um, quite surprising. The, the bottom grill is still good, but I'll get back to that. Once I get this all cleaned off, I'm going to put um, heat, uh, high temp paint in here on, on, on the fire box and everywhere else. These you can run like a grate or solid, which is cool. And surprisingly, they're not warped considering their age, and that's a common thing that you see warped on these stoves. And it still functions. Pretty cool. So. Now, the, uh, how these work, I'll put it back together in a minute. There's a bypass uh, valve in here. When you start the fire, you open this up and the smoke goes right on out the chimney. And then when you want to bake, you close this and the, the smoke goes across over the top of the oven, past the second two burners, down the side, through the back, and out the chimney. Pretty cool. 
Uh, so it would be a two burner stove with a bypass open and an oven and a four burner stove and a griddle with a bypass uh, I mean sorry with the bypass open it'll be a four burner stove and a griddle and only a two burner with it closed. Now another nice feature here this is a water jacket that's a cast iron water jacket in the burn chamber which is really great and the valves, the, the pipes come right on out the back and uh, you can it's basically it's got a built-in water heater which is super super efficient because it is right there and attached that's awesome now the negative things the back sheet is rusted out the screws no longer hold I'm just gonna scrap that and replace it with another piece of sheet metal this back plate has rusted through from pressure of the spring that's the oven door spring I'm gonna end up putting a piece of sheet down over that and then re replacing that entire section there's a little bit of a weak spot here, so I'm probably going to put a sheet back here. Although, look, the original enamel coating is still there. Uh, it had a weak spot from whatever. And so I'm going to end up putting new sheet there. And in the very bottom, because of the mice having had a nest, there's a, a hole through. So I'm going to have to drop in some sheet metal for the floor. Other than that, it's in very good shape for its age. Once we heat it up, I'm going to clean this off with uh, probably a green scrubber or steel wool or something, see what works best, and then re-season it, and you can cook right on this. So there you go guys, it's a Dixie 5, so if anybody wants to look that up, and in relatively good shape, and uh, my friend was suggesting we get it re-enameled one day and all properly refinished and everything, and it would be a very valuable stove. Uh, considering how good the rest of it is. All right, well, that's it so far. I'm going to do a test burn now and um, play around with it. Well, guys, I think you can tell that I have a fire going. Um, I don't have a pipe on the back yet. I was just playing around, uh, so it's smoky, which is normal because it doesn't have enough draft. But it is coming out the back pipe. I have the bypass... Uh, open so the smoke isn't going around the oven but check this out this is just a kindling <laughs> oh look at that fire um, I'm pretty impressed with it's burning real slower than I expected it would just with the kindling in it and this has been I think 10 minutes 15 minutes um, since I fired it up so this might surprise me and it turned out to be a very good cook stove with a long burn time uh, the previous owner said five six hours easy so I guess we'll find out and that's the goal of today's playing around again to clean it well Melanie wants to take care of some roosters that we got in excess here so she told me to put a pot of water on there and I set it on and immediately immediately you can hear boiling noises that's hot so we're gonna boil some water on here to process look at there's bubbles forming on the bottom of that already I just set it on Wow, that's hot. That is not going to take long to heat up some water. So that's going to be the hot side, and that's going to be the uh, not-so-hot side if you're cooking. That's how you're going to regulate your cooking temperature. I can see that now. There's going to be a big difference. And the oven is, you can hold your hand on it, which is good. This is, this is hot, but it's not going to burn you instantaneously. Oh, look at the smoke. Oh, that's hot. You can cook in that. That's hot. Now look at all the stuff getting blackened now. That's what I want to see. That's why we're burning it out here. Blacken all that stuff and cook this thing off good. And uh, sterilize everything. Everything's getting blackened on the top. By the time all the metal's blackened, then I'll be feeling good about it. And then we can sand it, scrape it, or however, and then resurface it. But we're using it now, funny enough, while well, test burning it. Well, the water's getting hot. It's been mere minutes, but look at the uh, metal is getting blackened. That's what I wanted to see. It's getting darker and darker. 
burning all that junk off from all the years of sitting. That's step one in cleaning this up. Burn it off, and then uh, I'm gonna clean it out, wire brush it inside, and then paint it. Uh, after you, I'm gonna wire brush it, then air compressor. Use an air compressor to blow it out, and then paint it. But I did not want to mess with anything until I killed any viruses and bacteria and whatever junk was in there first. Burn it off first. Well guys, it's just about to boil here. Not bad, and we only put one piece of wood in. I'll show you after the uh, original kindling. We put in a couple slivers of wood and then we put in one little log, which is just glowing gently. This, this is really good. So next, when I load this next, I'm going to time it and see how long it'll burn on a load. I just opened the bypass and so now this, the heat is going around and through and around the oven like I showed you earlier. Look at how clean that exhaust is. Pure heat. Really clean burning stove. That's incredible. All that means all the um, combustibles are being burnt with, and this is pine, pine wood. All the combustibles are being burnt, and there's nothing. Now that it's heated up, there's no smoke coming out anywhere, and it's just pure heat. Really, really good. Melanie, the reason she wanted that, she simmered a bird, and uh, she's plucking it. I'm not going to show the others that haven't been simmered yet because they're not nice looking, but we're processing some chickens today using our wood stove <laughs> outdoors. I just can't believe how clean that combustion is. Wow. I'm impressed. So we, uh, she just simmered the bird right on the wood stove. Pretty cool. So we're already cooking on the new wood stove, processing some chickens today. We had some excess roosters. We bought some Jersey Giants and um, they all turned out to be roosters, which was a bummer. So uh, we can't have that many roosters. We don't need them, they're just eating food. So they gotta go. Hi guys, well, Melanie hooked up a pot of fresh chicken with uh, chicken and potatoes and onions and peppers from our garden and lemongrass from our garden, rosemary from our garden. This is almost all entirely from our garden. And I put it on the, uh, the Dutch oven on top of the stove on the cooler side and we're gonna cook that down for dinner. So we got water going on here. After we, we did the chickens we put fresh water on. We've got dinner going over here and I've got some uh, coffee going to percolate over here. I just reloaded the wood stove and I've got to stoke up the fire. It's smoky right now because there's uh, it was just one piece of wood um, just with coals burning around it. It was just, what's the word for that? Anyway, it wasn't burning hot. So I've got to get this burning hot again and uh, all the smoke will stop and then I can start percolating some coffee. Look at that guys. That's a beautiful sight to a coffee lover. Ah, oh, nice. Using basically scrap wood that I had by the bonfire pit. So this is essentially free energy. Because that was just going in the bonfire and we're using it to cook meals. Uh, skin chickens, de-feathered chickens, perk coffee. Have another hot pot of hot water going on over there. Look at that. This is cool. I think this is what every homesteader should have. So I got my laser thermometer and I'm going to check the temperatures here and see what the uh, cook surface is here. 148 degrees. Let's look at the griddle in the middle. Hot. It must be. It must be the hotter surface. Let's give me an error and try again here. 131. Let's try this one over here. 389. That can't be. Is it hotter over here? Okay. 
346. So this one can't be right. There's no way. It's hard for me to get up there close to get the laser on it and not burn the laser thermometer itself. 432, that makes sense. That's hotter there. I can't get close enough. It's awkward because it's so hot. See what the outside of the door is. 245, that's hot. And the side, I know the side is kicking some heat. 327, that's hot. Now let's look inside the oven. Wait, first let's see what the oven handle is. I don't burn myself, wait, right there. 181 degrees on the oven handle. I can hold it. Let's see what the back of the oven is. 388 degrees. We can bake in there. Oh, that's on the burn chamber, that's too hot. 453 degrees, so it's about 400 degrees in the oven. 411. It's about 380, 400 degrees in the oven right now. Um, I've got the damper wide open, and that's about as hot as you're going to get it. When uh, coffee's done percolating, I'm going to damp it down and let the slow cooker cook slow again. But definitely, you can prepare your meals on this all the way around. Got it inside and I just poured two cups of beautiful coffee. Nice. Well guys, it may or may not make it inside the tiny house. We will see. It does need some sheet metal on the bottom where the, uh, the mouse nest was in the ash collecting tray. Collected moisture, rotted through that and rotted through the bottom. So it does need some sheet metal on the bottom and some other pieces repaired that uh, It'd be better to repair some or certain areas. And it'll never be a airtight stove until I repair all the, the leaks like that. As an outdoor cook stove though, it's a beauty. Coffee is proof of it right there. It is hot. It is a perfect hot cup of coffee. Percolator somehow reminds me of camping and uh, the rugged outdoors and there's a special taste to coffee made on a percolator especially when he made it on an antique wood stove like this so already we've used it heavily on day one the first day we brought it home definitely it's going to serve us well and it's a really awesome homestead tool i think all homesteads should have something like this because you've got your water you're cooking you're baking your heat all in one now if it doesn't make it into the cabin then it'll be an outdoor cook stove in a shelter somewhere but no matter how we do it or what we do with it it's going to get used here in the homestead it's going to get used a lot here in the homestead i will restore it and i will finish it up and then we'll do some test burning once it's airtight again or as much as these get and see how long it burns but until then we'll probably be using it here outdoors as I work on it but it's a clean burning stove once it gets going really clean the only thing about the wood stoves like this the wood cook stoves is it's very smoky starting up and that's a given I've read the forums they're very smoky starting up and uh, it's it's very messy when you first get going in the morning so I've got to keep, consider my options, but again, it will be used here for sure. So, I've got to hit the road and help some friends out, but meanwhile, that's going to stay. I've got somebody here watching over this for me. The uh, dinner stays on the stove in the slow cooker, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. I'm going to enjoy my coffee before I hit the road. Somehow it tastes that much better because it was made on the wood stove. Happiness in a cup. Well, it's late. Very, very late. Our friends were, the bus was delayed. We helped somebody get home from a bus trip. And uh, so our dinner has been stewing on the stove. Let me grab a glove here to take the lid off. But look at this. We're going to let the stove go out now. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Melanie gave me some potatoes and carrots. Um, later on in the day to add into there and it looks good it smells good so um, we're gonna take that in and have some dinner 
Well, there you go, guys. The new Homestead wood stove has already been used heavily today. I love it. Very exciting. Well, I'm going to go in and enjoy some amazing dinner from fresh chicken and fresh vegetables. And I will see you guys later. Please like, subscribe, and share. And follow our daily videos as we strive to become self-sufficient and off the grid on a budget. Talk to you later.